this video, uh, I will solve some of your homework questions about uh, polar coordinates and triple integrals and cylindrical co coordinates. Okay, so let me start from some polar co uh, some double integrals on polar coordinates. So the first example is. Uh, evaluate the double integral of y square over x square plus y square, and then uh, the area is given by uh, x square plus a. Uh, x square plus y square is a, and I mean the area is between these two circles. So the shape of the area is like a ring here, with uh, 0 greater than a, so it's between these two circles. Uh, so, so we need to uh, evaluate this double integral between these two circles. Okay, so usually how to find the value of the double integral uh, on polar coordinates? So usually the first step here, uh, I just write down the first step is you need to write yeah because we can see the area is uh the shape of the area is like a shadowed area here it's a shape like a ring so it's different from a rectangular uh, rectangular area so for the rectangular area like that uh, we always just using the integral i mean we use the double integral like dx and dy but for the uh, but for the area like uh, a circle or a ring, we will use the polar coordinate, which is the dr d theta here. So for this integral, uh, we need to write this double integral in in polar coordinate first. Okay, so uh, because uh, so write them in polar coordinate. So how to write them in polar coordinates? Uh, we have some relation relationship between x y and r theta, right? Which is uh, x is r cosine theta, and y is r sine theta. Also, we have the this d a. I mean, the formula d a is r times d r d theta. So this one is like a it's a formula of your textbook and between this dA and the R and the dR d theta in polar coordinate. So we can write this integral in R and theta. So double integral y is R sine theta square and for the bottom because we know we also know x square plus y square is r square, right? So this is a relationship on polar coordinate. We know the bottom is x square plus y square, which is r square. And then the dA becomes r times dr d theta. Okay, so uh, I just simplified uh, the function inside, and I get, so it's, so the r here, and then it's r times sine theta square dr d theta. Okay, so uh, here comes the question. What's about of this double integral on polar coordinate? Okay, so the second step is uh, we need to determine the bound uh, from the area. So, I mean, the error is given here. Okay, so uh, what's the bound? So it's like, so this is the uh, area, and then this is the origin. How to determine the bound? So we can see uh, for this shape, uh, the range of the angle theta, it goes from, so I mean, this one is theta is zero, it's goes from theta is zero uh, all around 
then you go back to theta to 2 pi. So the bounds for the theta should be from theta is 0 to theta is 2 pi. Okay, so I write, uh, so I make the theta is the uh, outer integral. So the bounds is from 0, so it will be from 0 to 2 pi for the outer integral. And then what's the bounds for the inside? Uh, because we have the area is... Oh, I forgot a square here. Okay, so uh, the bound for the inside integral is the bounds for the R. So the bounds for the R is from... I think A is smaller, so it's from A to... So the lower bound of the r it should be a in this case, and then the upper bound is a b. Okay, so we have a bound for this double integral. r times sine square theta. Okay, so the rest of them is uh, calculate, uh, evaluate this double integral. So yeah, I just uh, I just evaluate this integral now. So I get, I, uh, when we take an integral uh, with respect to r, we treat the sine square x is some constant. So this integral is, so this integral is mm, integral from 0 to 2 pi times sine square theta. And then the integral of r is, one half r square from r is a to r is b and then d theta and then we plug in r is a and b i get uh, this is one half b square b square minus a square times the integral of zero of two pi Okay, as for sine square theta, I will write sine square theta using a double angle formula. Uh, this one is 1... Okay, so it's... Uh, sine square theta is 1 half, 1 minus cosine 2 theta. Uh, d theta. I mean, this one is a constant, so I take them out. And then we, I evaluate this integral. So it's one half b square minus a square times one half. So the integral of this function is theta minus sine uh, minus one half minus one half sine two theta from zero to two pi. And then the last step is we plug in theta is zero and theta is two pi. I get this one is one half times b square minus a square times one half, uh, so it's two pi uh, minus zero. So finally, I get the final answer is pi over two times b square minus a square. Yeah. So this is this is just uh, evaluates the double integral. Okay, so let's go to the next one. This one is find the volume of the solid. Uh, under C is x squared plus y squared, and then above above a disk. So the disk is x squared plus y squared is that's what equals in Okay, so let me sketch the the solid first. So it's like we have a Z here and then this is the XY plane and we have a disk which is X so this is a disk X square plus Y square is less than 25 and then Z is uh, yeah so this surface is like it's like that yeah okay 
so yeah, we we want to find the volume of solid between this uh, uh under this surface and above the disk. Okay, so I set up the we set up the volume of the solid by double integral. So it's the integral of the height. I mean the z here, and then b a. So this is the formula of finding the volume of the solid if we know the height for every x and y. Okay, and then for this one, because the sh uh, because the area on x y plane is a disk, so we we are using the polar coordinate as well. So I write. Just like the first example, I write this integral in terms of polar, uh, in terms of r and theta. So double integral of so what's the z? So the height z is the height of the surface, which is x squared plus y squared, and then b a, and then why the mean polar coordinate? So this d a is r times uh, dr d theta and then this x squared plus y squared is r squared so and times r dr d theta and then we determine the bounds for theta and r okay as for the bounds for theta because this is a disk so it goes from theta is zero and then to theta is 2 pi. Okay, so we know the bounds of theta is from 0 to 2 pi. Yeah, because the uh, yeah, because uh, the area is a disk. So the range of theta is from 0 to 2 pi. And then uh what's the so what's the range for r? So the range for r should be so this 25 is 5 squared, right? So which means this one is the it's, it's like an r squared here. So the bounds for r is from 0 to 5. I mean 5 is the maximum radius. So the range for r is from 0 to 5. Okay, so and then we can evaluate this integral. So it's 0 to 2 pi, integral from 0 to 5, r cubed dr d theta is 0 to 2 pi, uh, 1 fourth, r to the 4. And lower bound and upper bound d theta. Okay, so it's integral from 0 to 2 pi times. Uh, 25 over 4 d theta so because the in inside so this one is only a constant so it's 2 pi times 625 over 4 it will be 625 pi over 2 yeah so we find the volume of the solid by by evaluate this integral Okay, so let's go to the next topic. Uh, this one is uh, the triple integral. So the idea of the triple integral is the same as the double integral. So it's like uh, when you take an integral over z, we just treat the x and y as a constant. Uh, if we are taking a y, we are taking integral of y, we think uh, other uh, other variables as constant so there there is no much difference between triple integral and double integral so I give you an example like so evaluate the triple integral over uh, uh, triple integral of y db and then the the e is given by a set of points uh, with the bounds on x, y, and z. 
So an x is from 0 to 3 and y is y is uh, from 0 to x and then z is uh, from x to y. Okay, so the first because is uh, this area is like a rectangular area. I mean, because we have the bounds for x, y, and z. So I would like to take the integral in terms of dy, dx. I mean, in terms of dx, dy, dz, but not using a polar coordinate or a cylindrical or a sphere coordinate. So, uh, okay, so what's the bounds for x, y, and z? So do we need to change the order for uh, dx, dy, dz, or we need the dz, dy, dx? Okay, so uh, I think the bounds for x is clear. It's from 0 to 3. It's not depend on y or z. So I would like to set the dx at the outer layer. So I mean the dx is the outer layer. And the bounds for dx is from 0 to 3 because it's not depend on y and z. Okay, for the second layer, uh, I would like to pick the y because after we determine the bounds for x, we can determine the bounds for y. So it's not depend on z. So the second layer is from 0 to x uh, dy. And then the inside layer, it must be z because the bounds of the z depends on x and y. So it's the integral of x minus y to x plus y. And then the function inside is, yeah, the function inside is y here. Okay, we're just taking the integral, uh, I mean, the iterated integral, just like what we did in double integral. So here, uh, dz here. So the first we take an integral of dz, we treat the y as a constant. So it will be 0 to 3 and then times y. I take the y out and then it's z. So z is x minus y to z is x plus y. And then dy dx. Okay now I plug the I plug in the lower bound and upper bound. So it's from y times x plus y minus x minus y uh, dy dx. Okay, so for this one, I would like to simplify that because the y can be cancelled out and I get 2y. So this one is just 2y squared. So I take the, I take the integral for the y so it's 0 to 3. Integral of 2y squared is 2 thirds y cubed, and then from 0 to x, uh, dx. Okay, and then this, this guy is from 0 to 3, 2 thirds times x cubed minus 0, and then dx. Okay, so what's the integral of this one? Yeah, they're just, just some polynomials, uh, just some power functions. So it's uh, 1 over 6 x to the 4. I think. Uh, 4. Yeah, that's right. And then from 0 to 3. And then I plug in 3 and 0. I get the final answer is. 81 over 6, which is uh, 27 over 2. Okay, so this is the um, this is the triple integrals. Okay, so next one uh, for next example, I will write I will show you how to uh, uh, how to find the how to find the Cartesian coordinate from the cylindrical coordinate. <coughs> so it's like, so, uh, so it's 
So it's from x, y, and z to r, beta, and z. Okay, so for example, we have the we have the coordinate in Cartesian coordinate, which is negative one, one, and one. So what's the coordinate? Uh, what's the what's the r, theta, and z? Uh, in cylindrical coordinate. So the first we know the z we keep the z the same. I mean the z is keep and change. And then we need to find the r and theta. So there is a relation between the Cartesian coordinate and cylindrical coordinate, which is x squared plus y squared is r squared. So in this case our x and y is negative 1 and 1, so we have r squared is 2. And because in cylindrical coordinate, r is always positive, so I mean I take the square root on both sides and then I get r is square root 2. So I have the r is square root 2. So what's the theta here? So for the theta, uh, we have uh, we can use the tangent theta. Uh, is we can use this formula. Tangent theta is uh, y over x. So and then we take the arc tangent on both sides. So it's negative one. So the theta is uh, arc tangent negative one. So there are many possible values for for the theta. I mean, the theta can be the arctangent of negative one plus n pi. Uh, because okay, so for example, in this x y plane, uh, when theta okay, so arctangent negative one is uh is negative pi over four. Okay, so which is, uh, which is this line on the x y coordinate? So this line is theta is, uh, pi over four. And however, we have some different choice, uh, for theta because we can see, uh, when theta is uh three pi over four, we will get the tangent theta is, I mean, we will get the tangent of 3 pi over 4 uh, is also negative 1. So the next the next step we need to determine is pi over 4 or 3 pi over 4 uh, for this theta here. Okay, so we need to go back to our x, y. So because our x is a negative, uh, is negative 1, which is a negative number, and y is 1, which is positive, so which means this point is on the second quadrant on on the x y plane. Right. So so this point is like is here. So which means we need to pick theta is 3 pi over 4 but not the uh but not the negative pi over 4. Here. So we need to pick theta is 3 pi over 4. So it's 3 pi over 4 for theta. So I convert the point on Cartesian coordinate to cylindrical coordinate. Yeah, okay, so uh, one, one more short example. Um, uh, how to identify the surface uh, on, on cylindrical coordinate. So the equation of the surface is r is uh, 2 sine theta. Okay, so we have some relationship between the Cartesian coordinate and cylindrical coordinate, which is, uh, I mean, we know the r square is x square plus y square, and x is r, um, r cos 
sine theta, and then y is r sine theta here. So the idea for this one is uh, if we can write this equation in Cartesian coordinates, it's much easier for us to uh, to identify the surface. So uh, in this case, I would like to multiply r on both sides of the equation. Yeah, because the r, I mean, on cylindrical point, in this case, r should not be zero. So I multiply r on both sides. This r square is two r sine theta. So uh, we can easily see the r square can be replaced by x squared plus y squared on Cartesian coordinate and r sine theta can be uh, is y okay so I write them in x y so it becomes a equation an equation on Cartesian coordinate so it's x squared plus y squared is 2y okay so do you know how to identify this surface so I would like to put the 2y to the left, move this 2y to the left, and completing a square. So it's x squared plus uh, 2y, uh, plus y squared minus 2y is 0. And then I completing a square, I write this one into a something parenthesis squared. So it's x squared plus y squared minus 2y plus y and minus y. And for this one, it will goes to y minus 1 squared plus x squared is... Uh, I move this negative 1 to the right. Okay, so you can see this one is... Uh, this, this is the equation of a circle on the xy plane. And then the center of the circle is... Uh, it's like, so this is the xy plane. So the circle, it, oh sorry, this is x and this is y. So the circle should be like that. Okay, and then, uh, okay, so let's go back to our equation to, I, I mean, this is like the trace on the xy plane. I mean, because we, we did not consider the z uh, for these steps. So as we know, uh, if this equation on cylindrical coordinates does not has, uh, does, I mean the z that does not appear on this equation, which means the trace on xy plane is the same for any, I mean, this trace is all, always the same for any z, I mean, for any z is equals to k. So, uh, the surface will, will be, the, I mean, the surface is a cylindrical, it's like a shell of the cylindrical, uh, of a cylinder. Yeah, so, I just uh, sketch the surface here. So, this one is z, and then this is the xy plane. So I sketch the I sketch a trace on xy plane. So it's a circle on xy plane and center at uh, zero one. And then because the trace doesn't change for any z, so I can just sketch the surface like yeah, so. You will be so the surface is that and then yeah I mean for any z for any z okay so we can see uh, the, the type of the surface is the side surface of the cylinder so and then we identified the surface of this equation Yeah, I mean, because this equation does not have z, so, I mean, the trace is, is not dependent on z. So we can only 
we can draw the trace on x, y plane first, and then extend this trace to all z, and I will we and then we will get the shape of the surface. Okay, so that's all. Thank you.